So I have absolutely no idea what this looks like. I'm extremely excited to see, so we're gonna open it up. Bag number two. Wow. I'm loving the color so far. <laughs> looks, yeah, very different from the original Soul 10, Soul 1 which was red, red and black, which you can see right there, actually. This is shades of blue, and it is really nice. What is that? <laughs> that is Soul 2. That is the Soul 2. Oh, wow. I want to try it out now. What, what size is it? 10. God but I got a problem. I forgot my harness. Unlike many kite companies, Flysurfer does not release a new version of a kite each year, and instead only brings a new kite to market when they feel it's been significantly improved. The original sole was released in 2018. So when we received the 10 and 15 meter sole 2, we knew absolutely nothing about what had been changed. So what's new? The sole 2 has more square wingtips compared to the original sole which is supposed to increase turning speed. Honestly, that's not something that we really noticed ourselves. Slower turning than I expected. I wanted it to be a little zippier. I don't know if it's the tune of this, but it took a lot of input to get a loop the way I would expect. The amount of cells has remained the same. 41 for kite sizes 10 and up, and 35 for sizes 8 and 6. The aspect ratio also remains the same, ranging from 5 to 6 depending on the size. The mixer looks identical, just different colors, which obviously will make you jump higher and turn faster. It was very similar to the old one. Even the long lines, it didn't spoil anything. It was still controllable, I could put it anywhere I wanted, I felt it all the time. It was perfect. Off the bat, I think this color is a good choice compared to the white of the original sole. We know a couple of people that have soles from when they first came out in 2018 used on sandy beaches and you can definitely see the discoloration after a few years. I think this color will hold up a lot better. The overall color scheme got mixed reactions on the beach. I personally really like it though. I'm not sold on the colors yet. Best looking fly surfer kite in years since the Bumblebee Speed 3 I would say. The fabric is new on the kite, which is interesting as it's slightly heavier. 33 grams per meter squared versus 32 grams per meter squared on the old sole. The biggest benefit of the fabric is supposed to be improved durability. But sorry guys, we're not going to be testing that in this video. What is interesting is that over the years, Flysurfer has shied away from super light materials like what was used on the Speed 2 Silver Arrow and moved to heavier, more durable fabric. For the average kiter, this makes sense. The leading edge bridle connection points have been reinforced and the same goes on the trailing edge. Overall, according to Flysurfer, the goal with the Soul 2 was to increase the durability. Some internal construction changes are supposed to lead to faster inflation as compared to the Soul 1. That didn't particularly stand out to us, however we do tend to pre-inflate our kites given that we launch from a wind shadow. Overall though, the faster the kite inflates, the better, as less things can go wrong. The bridles look solid, they're a little bit thinner than last year, uh, but I like, I like that they're still thick enough so they don't tangle too much. The craftsmanship, it's perfect. I just finished a session on a 15 meter sole 2. I also own a 15 meter sole 1. Compared with the old one, the new one flies very similarly. I've also just was flying a 14 meter Cabrina inflatable kite and compared with the inflatable, it's very forgiving. It's like being riding a soft fluffy pillow compared with you know, being hit by a baseball bat, especially in the gusty winds today. Is 
the 15 meter sole v2 feels more or less the same as the original sole uh, i would say it's a little bit more polished uh, it does sit rock solid in the skies a little bit more stable but yeah more or less the 15 v2 and the original one feel exactly the same way they're comparable i would say maybe the newer one is a little more sportier i would say So for me, the 15 meter overall, I do agree with what Yuri has said. It does feel very similar to the Soul V1. In terms of power, it does still pull like a truck and it has amazing low end performance. In terms of the bar pressure, it does feel very similar to V1. It's definitely not as light as the Sonic in comparison. Um, however, it doesn't tire my arms in any way. Um, I did only get to try it a handful of times and during those times I was a little bit overpowered. Uh, but that being said, I did quite enjoy the 15 meter. So this was a nice mini session on my 10 meter sole. Excited to see the difference between uh, 10 meter sole and sole two back to back. In terms of the low end performance, I would say that the V2 is just slightly improved compared to the V1. I was lucky enough to get a really nice foil session in light wind, about six to nine knots on the new 10 meter sole 2. And it was pretty awesome. Um, I had no issues. I did not feel underpowered whatsoever. And I never had any fear that the kite was going to fall from the sky. So yeah, I would definitely trust the 10 meter as a great low wind kite. I think that this kite has a little bit more power than uh, the regular sole. More linear power, but it still has the nice sole pull to get you out of the water, the water start. It's got a little more grunt when you, when you loop the Sonic, it doesn't give you quite as much pull. To be quite honest, my steering line should have been about one centimeter shorter. I felt, I felt that sometimes I really had to yank the kite to get it, get it do what it, what it needs to do. Having said that, I felt that it was really quite agile. I even tried to helicopter it a few times, almost like Sonics. It's not as good, but it's in between. The 10 meter sole V2 feels less like the original one and more like a nine meter sole, actually. It feels more like an LEI. I felt that there was definitely more bar pressure and maybe just a little tamer in a down loop, not quite as, as spiky in the, in the power. So those are my thoughts so far, but I had the wrong, wrong wing at a race wing on and the wind is too light. So I couldn't really uh, sample the boosting. So when it comes to high wind performance, the Soul 2 handles strong winds very well. 10 meter so is one of my favorite sizes. Uh, I love the handling, I love the control, I love the boosting. I jumped over 16 meters today on it. When it comes to handling, personally, I don't like a lot of bar pressure, and I find the sole to be quite comfortable. It's about medium range, not as light as the Sonic, for instance, but it's comfortable. You can feel the kite and the feedback is pretty direct, obviously more so with the 10 compared to the 15. The handling is much more direct, and if you let go of the bar, it completely depowers right away. The depower throw is very short, which I didn't like at first, but when you're jumping really high, it's actually much easier to land high jumps with the new Sol V2, I find, because the second you let go of the bar, it depowers, so it's way easier to control your height. So that speaks to the range of the kite. If you really wanted to have a one kite quiver, you could do it very easily with the Sol 10 meter V2, if you wanted to. When it 
comes to stability, both the 10 and 15 meter were quite stable. The only time we had any issues with the stability was the very first session we had with the kite when the wind was really gusty. If I let the bar out, there was some minor tip collapse. Given that foil kites generally don't like gusty wind, this isn't overly concerning for me. Put it another way, when it comes to foil kites in gusty conditions, the V2 sole feels very safe, which is important to me. I had no problems with stability. The only thing I noticed is that wing tips sometimes fold. They don't fold too much. Uh, they like, recover right away, but they do fold. On the version one, I didn't see them fold at all, like, or maybe very rarely. So I really appreciated uh, being able to ride in the gusty wind and not being beaten up by the wind. That was the nice feature of it. Relaunching the Soul V2 is extremely easy, as easy as it is with the V1. Um, I had an instance where I had to relaunch an extremely light wind. I honestly didn't even think it was going to happen, and it did. Uh, between Yuri and I, we both relaunched it a couple of times and we witnessed our friends relaunch it and there was really no issue with it. There are some differences compared to the Soul 1. However, the flying characteristics are still pretty similar, which in our opinion is a great thing. The improvements to the kite should help with the overall durability and longevity of the kite. I like it. Um, I'm definitely going to get one. I'm going to get a 10 meter because you know what? Uh, the Soul, and especially the Soul 2, does really well in gusty winds. On the record, off the record, I would keep my Soul 1. I would probably, because I'm used to it, but I think that I prefer Soul 1 to this kind. However, I love the fabric. I don't know if it's the same, but it's, it seems to be crisper, nicer, lighter. I'll definitely be looking for one. So there you have it, our review of the Soul 2. Let us know what you think, and if you're interested in trying this kite in the comments below. Thanks for watching.